section 6.2 trig equations. The first thing we're going to look at is the sine of theta equals square root of 3 over 2. Now this is something we've seen before. The first thing to notice is the square root of 3 over 2 is positive. So if we think about the, the uh, unit circle, what we'll realize is that if sine is positive, we're either in the first or second quadrant. So what we'll do is we'll just draw triangles in each of those quadrants. And the sine of theta, what is that equal to? And if we remember, we have Sokotoa, which simply means if I'm looking at sine here, the sine of theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. So this square root of 3 over 2 is simply going to be square root of 3 here. The hypotenuse is 2. And it'll be the same for the triangle in the second quadrant, which is square root of 3 here and a 2 here. And then what we know, this is one of our special triangles. So if we look at those special triangles that this one is, this is actually 1, and this would be a negative 1 here. So now what we need to understand is what are those angles. So now when we look at those angles, this angle here is going to actually be 60 degrees. And this angle over here is also 60 degrees. But the angle we're actually looking at here isn't the 60 degrees there. But it will be this angle measure here. And that angle measure is actually going to be 120 degrees. So therefore, if I'm looking for the answer for this equation here, I could simply say from this picture that theta actually equals 60 degrees or that and, I should say, or could equal 120 degrees. So those would be my two answers for this. <clears throat> Assuming that the directions were from zero to 360 degrees. Now, a lot of times what they might do is say, hey, what is the answers if it's for all of them? And we'll talk about that later. I have another example here too. So take a look at this one. So this was actually from the book, um, problem number 15. So essentially here, this is gonna be a similar way we're gonna actually do this problem. But notice here, this is an equation. There's more stuff here. So essentially what we have to do is we have to make it look just like we did this problem here. So that means I'm going to have to get this trig function here, okay, equaling a ratio. So and that's a single trig function. So what I'm going to do is over here I'm going to create that same thing. So essentially I'm going to be solving for that thing. So first off, what does that mean? That means I... <clears throat> First, subtract 1. And then I'm going to get 2 cotangent x equals negative 2. <clears throat> and then next, remember, i got to get that single trig function by itself. So now I'm going to divide by 2. And then I'm going to get cotangent of x equals negative 1. So this is the equation we're actually going to find. But kind of keep this in mind, too. Notice the interval here. It says solve each equation, if you look at the directions, for exact solutions over the interval 0 to 2 pi. So remember, the answers we're going to have here are going to have to be in radians. So now I'm just going to do my triangles here. Now notice this cotangent of theta, or cotangent of x, equals negative 1. And that's a negative number. So now when I think of this idea of my unit circle, that's going to put me in what quadrant? So I know all students take calc. So that's going to simply put me in either the second quadrant or the fourth quadrant. And remember, keep in mind, when I draw these triangles, one of my sides has to be the x-axis. So just kind of keep that in mind. 
All right, so what we're going to have here then is we're going to have this angle here and that angle there um, initially. So when I take a look at this here, cotangent of x equals negative 1 over 1. And now, again, I think of that Sokotoa. So when I look at Sokotoa, I'm thinking of tangent because cotangent is just the flip of the ratio of tangent. So if tangent equals opposite over adjacent, that would tell me cotangent of x is going to equal adjacent over opposite. So that's what we're looking for here. And since ours equals negative 1, that simply means that this here, for this one here, it's going to be adjacent over opposite. So that means this is going to be a 1, and that's going to be a 1 since it's 1. And that means this here is going to have to be a square root of 2, and that's our other special triangle. And if you look at this, that would have to put a negative here because I'm on the negative x-axis here, and that's the x, that's the y. Don't forget about that. And then for this one here, that's going to be a positive 1, and that's going to actually be a negative 1 here because I'm going down on the y. And that there is square root of 2. Hang on a sec. I'm getting some messing up here. And I'm going to erase these little pieces. Yeah, that didn't work very well. No. Terrible eraser. Okay, not really. It's okay. All right, so anyways. So now, what I'm going to have for my answer here is if you look at this angle here, I know this here is 45 degrees. Oops, excuse me. 45 degrees. So that this angle here is going to actually be 135 degrees. But remember our directions. It's not um, degrees. It's actually radians. So 45 degrees, if I take a look at that, is actually going to be pi fours. So that angle there is pi fours. So then this one here is actually going to be 3 pi fours, my 135 degrees. And now think about this. Now I have to go all the way around to there. And that angle there is actually going to be, what is that? That's going to be 2 pi minus 45 degrees, which is pi fours, or I can think of it that way, then that's going to be a pi four short. And if I went all the way around, that would be eight pi fours, right? Eight pi fours would be two pi. But I want a pi four short, so that's seven pi fours. And notice the directions, it's set from zero to two pi, so it'll only be those two angles. So then for my answer here, my x would equal 3 pi fours and 7 pi fours.